what's going on guys? Welcome to quarantine chemistry. <laughs> so things are a little bit different now, but I wanted to still get all this content out to you in some way. So here we go. Um, tasks one and two focus on um, chemical equations and types of chemical reactions. So let's start with the chemical equation list. So there are three parts for every chemical equation. We have reactants, products, and state symbols. Reactants are always gonna be on the left side of our chemical equation. In this format, the arrow is the middle portion that separates reactants and products. So the reactants come together and they form products. Let's take a look at this example to see what we're talking about. So here we have methane reacting with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. We can say that in words or just use this chemical equation to explain what's going on. Pretty cool. In chemistry, there's a fundamental law called the law of conservation of matter. The law of conservation of matter states that matter cannot be created or destroyed. And so for this reason, it's important that we use what's called coefficients to balance chemical equations. What we do this for is to show that atoms are never created or destroyed in a chemical equation or a chemical reaction. Energy and matter are both conserved. So what you start with is what you end with. It's just rearranged or transferred. We are focusing on matter here. We are focusing on atoms. So let's look at what balancing an equation looks like. When we balance equations, we use coefficients. That's a coefficient. The lowest coefficient you could ever use is two. And so you always start there. Think, what can I add coefficient-wise to balance the equation out? So first thing I'm gonna do is look at both sides. Remember the arrow is the dividing line. It shows how the reactants are converted into products. And the law of conservation of matter says that matter can't be created or destroyed. So whatever we start with, we have to end with. So, I started you off with one coefficient here. This is what a coefficient will look like when you write it in on a question or on an equation. So in this, in this example, we have NaCl plus F2 produces two NaFs and a certain amount of Cl2s. So what this two does is it applies to the whole molecule. So it applies to the Na and the F. So this means we have two Na's and two Fs. So to illustrate what this looks like with Skittles, we can look at this as two NaFs. So if we count up how many of each we have, you can see, okay, there's two Na's and there's two Fs. Okay, now we have to have the same amount of Na's and Fs on the left-hand side. So the way we can do is check, okay, I see two F's here. The little two means that it's a molecule of F2. So it would look like this. All right, so there's two F's on the left, two F's on the right. Yay! Now let's look at Na and Cl on the left-hand side. There's no numbers next to the Na and the Cl. So that means that the compound NaCl has one atom of Na and one atom of Cl. So one compound of this would look like that. We need not one, but two NAs. So that means we need two NACLs because you can't just throw one NA atom in there. You have to make sure that it's put together with its pair, with its other partner in the compound. So we have two NACLs. When we do that, we have to use coefficients to show that. So we'll put a two here and we are balancing the equation. The two applies to the NA and to the CL. You can think of it like multiplication. Two times one Na is two. Two times one Cl is two. If you want, you can just put a number one here to show that it is not changing. It's just one molecule of F2. And then let's double check everything else on the right-hand side. The only thing we haven't yet accounted for is the Cl2. Now, there are two Cls on the right-hand side. They're bonded together because there's a little two telling us that there's two Cls bonded together. So it'll look like this and that's all we need. We just need one molecule of Cl2 and we're good to go because now if you count them all up, you got two and two, you have two and two, and two and two. Everything is, everything is balanced. And we did that with coefficients. So the final balance equation says two NaCl plus one F2 produces 
two NaFs plus one Cl2. Okay, this next example tells us that H2 plus O2 makes H2O. That's water. This is how we get water. It comes from two gases, hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Now, it would be really nice if we could just say, to balance the equation, let's just take this two away. We can't do that though. You can't take away these subscripts. The subscripts tell us that these are molecules and they are bound together. And the reason why chemistry works in terms of its release of energy and all of the different changes that we see um, when we do this reaction is because bonds are broken and bonds are reformed. So we can't take this two away because otherwise we'd be, we'd be saying that there's no molecule there. It's just an atom and that's not true. So what we have right now is H2. So these are our H's. We have one of these molecules. We also have an O2 molecule. Okay. And we have our so recognizable H2O molecule right here as a product. Okay. So right now it's not balanced because we have one O on the right hand side, but two of them left. And so how do we balance that out? Well, easy thing to do is to, is to add a coefficient of two to the right. If we do that, now we're gonna have not just one O, we'll have two O's, because remember the two applies to the O and the H's. So now we will have this molecule. But unfortunately, this now causes a problem. We now have four H atoms, two and two, because there's two for each H2O molecule. So we gotta do something about that on the left-hand side. So what can we do? We can add a coefficient here. 2 times 2 is 4, just like 2 times 2 here is 4. Yay, we are balancing this out. So what we have here is another molecule of H2, and now, if you look, we have an even amount of every atom. We can even think about this uh, visually by drawing like a dividing line here. So, so the arrow is where reactants go to products, and it should be balanced on either side of the arrow. So I'll just do like a quick... If you think about this like two sports teams, if you have two soccer teams, right? If it's a fair game, there should be even amounts of players. Now, we can think of this as like uh, the reactants versus the products. They can be in different formations, but the amount of players have to be the same on either side. So we have two pairs of yellow here and a pair of red here. And then they just, this, the, the products team just decided to pair up differently. They decided to do uh, two groups of three right? But there's even amounts of each color on each side. Okay, I want you guys to try one on your own now. Take a look at these colors that I assigned each atom. Take a look at the equation. Notice it's uh, Na plus H2O produces NaOH and H2. So how can we balance this out? So you're going to add coefficients in these blank spaces. And I would also encourage you to either draw using markers, or if you happen to have some Skittles or candy lying around or some other manipulative you can use, build the molecules and the atoms like I built the other two examples as well. Did you guys get this? Hopefully you did. Um, just to go over it real quick, we have two of these uh, NAs reacting with two H2O molecules, and then we have two NaOHs and one H2. So we can count it. We have two NAs on either side, four H's on either side, right? Two here, two here. So that's four on the left and then four on the right, draw a little dividing line here. And then lastly, we have two O's on either side. So two O's here and two O's here. Now that we've learned the nuts and bolts of what a chemical equation is and what it entails, there are different types of chemical reactions, subcategories. We're gonna learn about five. Number one, synthesis reaction. Two become one. One reactant reacts with another reactant to make one product. For example, magnesium reacts with oxygen to produce one product, magnesium oxide. It's synthesis because you got two reactants making one product. The opposite of synthesis is what we call decomposition. In a decomposition reaction, we have one reactant that breaks apart into multiple products. It's gonna be at least two products. So we've seen this in every version of elephant toothpaste that we've done, that has been a decomposition reaction. Hydrogen peroxide breaks apart into multiple products. It actually breaks apart into water and oxygen. So H2O2 produces H2O and O2. 
Next up, we have replacement reactions. Replacement reactions can happen two ways, single replacement and double replacement. A single replacement reaction happens when a single element replaces one part of a compound. Like right here, where you see this aluminum being dissolved in hydrochloric acid. The single aluminum element is gonna replace the H in HCl to produce aluminum chloride and hydrogen gas. A double replacement reaction is very, very similar. It is where you have two compounds, each with two parts. And if you're doing a, a duo dance, swapping dance partners, it's the same idea here. So in a double replacement reaction, we have one part of each compound swapping places. Just like in this reaction here where we have lead nitrate reacting with potassium iodide. It is a double placement reaction because the lead replaces the potassium, producing lead iodide and potassium nitrate. And last but not least, we have the fun one, the best explosive one of all combustion. It is when you have a fuel that is burned in oxygen or reacting with oxygen. Two products will always be formed in this reaction, carbon dioxide and water. So the template or the way you remember that this is combustion, if you see a question on a test or something that asks, what reaction is this? The way you would tell if it's combustion or not is look at the products, say, oh, CO2 and water. Hmm, that must be combustion. Double check by looking at the reactants. And if O2 is one of the reactants, you know for sure it's combustion. So that is your cue. I hope that you have an excellent day and just keep on pressing through. These times are different, but I just want to encourage you. We're going to get through this. We're all in this together. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped. Have a great day.